the fastest versus the slowest? That is the question that we're aiming to answer today. I'm gonna to be going through my entire collection, looking at the different genuses uh, that I own, and we're gonna be working out which are the fastest and which are the slowest growing plants. What is up my planting people? My name is Lithius and welcome to Roots Ready. Okay, so we're gonna start right here. This is my Serious Peruvianus, uh, also known as the Blue Cactus. And I'm gonna be really careful with this one because the last time I picked this bad boy up, Serious Peruvianus Blue Cacti. Um, <laughs> oh God, that was a spider, damn. <laughs> I don't want to go through that one again so i'm going to be really really careful with that but this is by far the fastest growing cactus or cacti that i own in my collection this thing has absolutely blown up this year as you can see i don't know if the camera will pick it up but there is a clear sort of difference in color so from about here all the way up here so we're talking about 30 centimeters this is all completely new growth in the past basically just during the summer months and it's still growing i think i only showed this plant only recently in one of my favorites video and even since then it's probably grown another five centimeters which is really really impressive considering that this is a cactus and cacti tend to be quite slow growing but not this one it's really really going it's really really pushing and i'm already starting to consider what i'm going to do with this cactus when it reaches my ceiling i think i'm going to have to chop it I'm gonna to have to propagate it, uh, but for now, we're just gonna enjoy it as it is, as it keeps growing. It's just so gorgeous, so beautiful. I really love that bluish sheen, that natural sunscreen that this plant has. Uh, it's really sort of that dusty, rusty kind of blue uh, tone to it, hence the term blue cactus. I would say that by far, this is the quickest cactus or even succulent that I own at the moment. So this is it, this is the Serious Peruvianus, also known as the Blue Cactus. Okay, cool, so we've seen the fastest growing cactus, what's the slowest? Boom, this one right here. Although this is part of the Serious family, this is known as a Crested Cactus or a Matillo Cactus. And the reason for that, you could tell by just the sort of the misshapen, unmanaged growth pattern of this plant, it really just, looks like something alien, looks like almost like a brain, I would say. It's really, really fascinating, um, this plant to me. It was one of my list, on my wish list for a very, very long time, and I'm super, super excited to have it. I haven't had it for a terribly long time, uh, but in the time that I've had it, it hasn't grown an inch, a centimeter, a millimeter, nothing. It's just stayed the same, which means that it's alive, which is the most I could hope for. But yes, it is really, really slow. I have it in my west facing window. It gets lots of sun. I water it in the summer months, maybe once every two weeks, once every week, depending on how hot it gets in that window and nothing. I had the blue cactus in that same windowsill and I had to actually move it from there because it ran out of space and I had to get it on the floor where it had a lot more space um, to grow. But this one, I don't think we're gonna get there any time soon. Now this plant, what I would say, I have seen some larger specimens online uh, and they cost an absolute fortune. <laughs> and I think that's because of the slow growing habits of this plant. Don't get this plant if you're expecting it to double in size in a year, in two years, it won't happen. This plant requires sunlight, regular fertilizing, patience and time. <laughs> that's how you get successful with this plant. But yeah, this is it. This is the Matillo cactus, also known as the crested cactus. The slowest growing one in my collection. The fastest growing Hoya in my collection is this one right here. This is the Hoya latifolia. And it is an absolute, absolute beast of a plant. I got this plant as a single leaf cutting only a few months ago. It was this year that I bought this plant and it has absolutely taken off. Like it was in a long vine and then I started running out of space. So I decided to 
insert these three bamboo skewers in here and just wrap the plant around it. Since I've done that, it has several new growth points, two growth points over here. Uh, you can see one on this side of the leaf and another on the other side. And then if we come up here further up the vine, you can see another two growth points as well as the growing tip as well, which actually fell off. But it looks like we have some activity up there and we might get some new growth still. So this plant is growing absolutely unchecked. It is super well rooted in here. Like the, the, the pot itself feels so hard. And to think that I've only had this plant just a couple of months, maybe four or five months, and it's grown this much in such a short space of time. It gets so thirsty, it soaks up the water like nothing. Um, I'm really, really impressed with it. Uh, this plant, I have it in front of my, whoops. I've got this plant in front of my east facing window um, and it gets lots of morning light and it seems to really, really enjoy that. Um, I haven't noticed it doing any sort of um, sun stressing or anything like that. The closest thing to it is this leaf came out a little bit deformed, but this was when it was super, super hot, when it was touching that 40 degrees Celsius mark. Super, super hot. Um, but apart from that, it's been an absolute charm to grow. An absolute charm. Eventually, I'm going to have to think about chopping this bad boy up, propagating it and sharing it out. But for now, I'm just going to enjoy the journey. This is the fastest growing, the fastest growing Hoya in my collection. In comparison to that, this plant, the Wilbur Greaves, is I would say one of the slowest growing Hoya in my collection. I got this around the same time as I got the Latifolia, and you can see the difference in growth. Now, I'm lucky enough that when it came, it had this leaf over here and another that was coming out, but they uh, both fell off. They were little baby leaves and they both fell off. And since then I have had two, four, six leaves and two more on their way out as well, just over here. I would say I, would, I did expect this plant to grow a little bit faster than it has, but you know, I think that might be to do with the variegation. I don't know. This is the the heaviest variegation I have on any Hoya. And in my collection, this one seems to be the slowest growing of them all. But that might just mean that it needs more time to root up really, really well, um, and then it might take off. But until then, this is one of the slowest growing Hoya uh, in my list. But the crown for the slowest growing Hoya is this one. This is my Hoya Meredithii. And this thing I've had for over a year, and it has done almost nothing for me, apart from give me a very, very tiny leaf, this one over here, um, and that was a very long time ago. Then it gave me this one over here, and it has done nothing. It, it did have quite a large, substantial leaf on it when I purchased it, and it's done nothing. You can see there are several growth points that have tried, that have tried to start growing on this plant, and then they have all been aborted. I have a feeling that this plant might have the infamous false spider mite on there, I don't know. I've tried to use the macro lens of my camera, um, but nothing, I can't see anything wrong with this plant. So I've moved it far away from all of my other Hoya. It's sitting alone, lonely, by itself, in a different corner of the room. And since I've moved it actually, I've noticed that just on the top here, you can see that right there, there's a little sign that that leaf may, may unfold. I'm gonna keep, uh, my fingers crossed, but if this plant continues to go downhill, I think I am going to have to get rid of it. It's going to have to kick the bucket. If you have this Hoya in your collection, let me know how it grows under normal circumstances, because at the moment, I just can't seem to make this one happy. So this is it. This is the Hoya Meredithii, the slowest growing plant in my collection, probably across the whole lot. I feel like every single time I enter my grow tent behind me, that this plant right here, my Anthurium forgetii, has a new leaf or there's something <laughs> happening. This thing is relentless. It grows so quickly. So it has to, has to take the crown of the fastest growing Anthurium in my collection. Whether that be by inflorescence, where it's just, it's a regular producer of inflorescence in my collection, or if that's by leaf. Take a look at this new leaf. Oh, wait, I wish the light would pick it up because there's this blue sheen to this leaf. Maybe if I ripple it around a little bit, it might pick it up in the camera, but oh, this thing is something else. It is such 
a pretty, pretty plant um, and really fast growing. In fact, this is also probably one of my thirstiest anthurium as well. And that's probably because it grows so quickly. Um, and because of that, it has to take first place as the fastest growing anthurium in my collection. It is also, I find to be an easy to care for anthurium. Oh, this leaf looks so dark and luscious. Oh, I like that. Wow. Yeah, this is gorgeous. This one is on its way out. This was one of the first leaves uh, that grew in my collection, but it's on its way out and that's okay. That's okay. We appreciated you in the time that you gave us. But yeah, it's growing so quickly. The leaves are sizing up nicely. I cannot complain about this plant. It's also reliable in terms of providing me with inflorescence, easy to, to propagate via seed as well. I've tried to pollinate this one over here with some crystallinum pollen. Unfortunately, I don't think it took because the, yeah, the inflorescence is really soft. It's gone purple. Usually it goes green when it's ready. Um, and an indicator for me is when this part over here, where the inflorescence connects to the petiole, once that goes yellow, forget about it. It was not successful. But in any case, I know that I can risk taking chances with this plant by trying to come up with some really interesting hybrids. And the reason for that is because I know that it's always gonna be hitting me again if another uh, inflorescence. Because it's so predictable in terms of producing new leaves and new inflorescence, I, I don't, I'm not really too scared about trying new things with this plant, exploring um, and taking risks. But that's it, this is the fastest growing anthurium in my collection, the Forgetii. And on the opposite end of the scale, a plant that is probably one of my favorite anthurium is this one right here, the queen, the queen anthurium. Guys, it is such a magnificent plant. Just look at this royal leaf. But by golly, my goodness, this thing is slow. I wish it was as frequent of a grower as the Forgetii, but it's not. It is so slow. I've had just this leaf this year. No, I think I may have had this one as well this year, um, but it's really, really slow. I have another leaf emerging, which I'm sure will make a favorites video when it's ready, um, but it's just super, super slow growing. I will say that in the first few months when I had this plant, it was, it did grow maybe a leaf every two months or so. Um, however, I have, man, I think I've cracked the code of this in terms of putting this bag on top of the moss. This is here to maintain that humidity and to keep the humidity in because this plant will completely slow down its growth when it's dry. And we're talking, if it drops below 50%, uh, humidity in this in this dome over here, this plant will start to really slow down its growth. So by putting this baggie on here, it helps to maintain that moisture around the roots, around the stem, uh, to ensure that the plant can keep growing. And since I've done that, this is the quickest, although it's slow, this is the quickest I've had another leaf come out after um, a leaf has hardened off. So this has only been hardened off maybe like a, just over a month, maybe two months or so. And we already have uh, another leaf coming in. Typically, I wouldn't expect to see another leaf maybe until next month. And then with us coming to the end of summer, that might even be slower still. Uh, but yeah, this is, despite its beauty, despite its majesty, the Queen Anthurium is the slowest growing Anthurium in my collection. The fastest growing philodendron in my collection has to be this one right here, my variegated bow mark guys i got this plant as like a four leaf cutting very very tiny and look at it now it is an absolute beast of a plant it's growing so quickly definitely you can see that there's more growth on the non-variegated side it's taller than the variegated side now what i have noticed recently is that i've been putting out some fully variegated leaves it's it's not it's not great because this means that this plant is unable to photosynthesize and it will probably just just die and any leaf i think that comes off of this part of the plant is likely to to follow that same vein and be completely variegated so i'm thinking i might have to cut it down um just so that we can have some more stable variegation in the plant 
Um, but anyway, I digress. <laughs> As I said, this plant, since I've had it in my collection, it has been a real pleasure to grow it. Uh, it's one that I don't have to worry about too much. It's really, really, really easy to care for. I have this one growing in pond. Sometimes I don't have to water this plant for a month. It will go a month without watering. I just have a little reservoir in there and it just does its thing. Uh, obviously, when it's hotter, I might have to increase the frequency of that. But this one is just get yourself a, a variegated bow mark if you're looking for some variegation in your collection. The price of them have come down quite a bit where they're a bit more affordable now. So if you can, I would definitely suggest it. It's quite an interesting plant to, to grow. Um, it does tend to fill up a space, a corner, because of its growth habits where it doesn't just have like a single vine that it follows. It splits off and it grows in little clusters and so on. So it fills up and it gets bushy quite quickly. And I really, really do enjoy growing it because of that. But yeah, that's it. This is the variegated bow mark, the fastest growing philodendron in my collection. And on the other end of the scale is this one right here, my philodendron bilitae uh, crossed with the atobawensis. It is, I would say it's one of my slowest growing plants. I've had an issue trying to make this plant happy. I have it growing in pond, that might be the issue. Um, some plants just prefer soil um, than they do semi-hydro, but still I, I want it in, in semi-hydro because it makes the care for me so much easier. Um, but I've had this plant for quite a while now, and since then it's only grown this much. I've seen some people with some amazing specimens with really, really large leaves, but mine has yet to get to that sort of level. This is the biggest, the nicest leaf I've had in a long time. They look like this, they're starting to size up, so they might start to increase its frequency of growth, but since I've had it, it's been super, super slow. I had a lot of deformed leaves, something like this. Oh, look at this one. This one was a mess. What the... What is this? What is that? I have no idea. Um, but I've had, I've got this plant in an area with slightly less light, and I found that 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 has helped it to grow a little bit better. The leaves are less deformed, um, but it's still slow in comparison to any other philodendron that I have in my collection. This was a tough decision in terms of the slowest growing because I was going to put it up. It was between this one behind me, which is my imperial red and this one but i feel like this one has a reason to be slower and that's because it's so much larger the leaves are so much bigger of course it's going to take more energy to grow but this is small it has no excuse to be this slow <laughs> it really doesn't but it, it is and i don't know let me know if you have a pure atabawensis or a pure bilitai are they as slow as this i don't know i feel like this is coming up to a year almost uh, that i've had this one in my collection it hasn't really done much it's growing, it's rooted, it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, it's got no pest pressures or anything like that, but it just seems to, it just seems like it doesn't want to grow for me. Maybe I'll get it on a pole, on a moss pole, and maybe that might help, but yeah, I'm going to keep trying. I really do enjoy this plant. Uh, I, I do forget it, but when I see it, I'm like, oh, this is so pretty. I love the bluish sheen on this. It's giving me um spirit of sancti kind of vibes the spirit of sancti definitely does have a little bit of a blue sheen on it um and this one is giving me that sort of that sort of uh a vibe so i am i am enjoying it but yes this is the slowest growing philodendron in my collection the bilitai cross atabawensis the final family of plants that i'm going to talk about right now are monstera and i think everybody can agree that this plant right here the adansoniae is the fastest growing because this thing is an absolute beast. I bought this as a single leaf cutting, just a one leaf cutting. I went to a plant store, they had it like for a pound. And I was like, fine, I'll take it. It wasn't a plant that I was particularly drawn to because it's so common. Um, I thought I could pick it up at any point. So when I saw it for a pound, I was like, hey, why not? Stuck it in some, some pond and it grew to beastly levels. I've now put it into some soil to make sure I don't hit the ceiling. So it's now in some coca coya and pond mix and it just continues to grow. Earlier this week, I gave it the prop. I chopped it at the top and I've put the propagations into the soil um, and hopefully that's gonna take off and absolutely, absolutely take over this pole. And I think it's gonna be so gorgeous to have a pole full of adinsoniae. 
this thing is really quick to grow. It sizes up lovely when you have it on a pole and it's growing upwards and not downwards. If it's draping, you're going to maintain those smaller leaves kind of like this size over here. But when it's, when it's mounted up on something, it really, really does size up quite quickly. Um, oh, I've just noticed that this one actually has some secondary fen fenestrations, which is quite cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an easy one to look after. It doesn't require um, lots of care. It doesn't require lots of light. I've got this one kind of pulled away from a west facing window in the corner of my kitchen and it just does its thing. Watering, it can tolerate periods of drought. So if you do forget to water it, it won't completely die on you. <laughs> but you don't want to overwater it either. Although it can handle some overwatering as well for some of the heavy handed people uh, out there. It is so easy to care for. Definitely, if you're starting on your plant journey and you want something that's a little bit forgiving, the Adansonii is right for you. It's so quick. It's so beautiful. It's just so, it's just, it's just, it's literally one of the, one of the staples of plant care, right? It's like this one, the Deliciosa, they're just plants that I think everybody needs to have at some point. It's like a rite of passage almost. But yeah, the fastest growing plant, the Monstera Adansonii. Trying to compare apples to apples, I would say that this one right here, the Monstera Peru, is the slowest growing Monstera in my collection. Um, it, it's not super slow, not as compared to sort of the crested cactus or whatever. It does grow quite regularly, but on the grand scale of Monstera, this one I would say is the slowest in my collection um, by, for sure. So um, I have propagated this one quite a while ago. You can see this extra bit here. Uh, and so far it's only given me just a handful of leaves. If this was the <laughs> Adansodii, I will probably have maybe double the length of this in the same amount of time uh, but so I would say it's a little bit slow growing but who cares it's so pretty it's so gorgeous those leaves the texture it's just oh it's just to die for I really really do enjoy growing this plant I've got it situated right in front of my my door so it's one of the first things you see when you enter the house and I just want it to take over I want it to completely engulf this wooden plank <laughs> and I think then we'll be in the game, we'll be in the big leagues. This is an absolutely, absolutely gorgeous plant to grow. The leaves do get bigger, but because I haven't got it on a moss pole where it can actually have regular humidity, I don't think I'm gonna, I can expect anything bigger than what I've got at the moment. But no, I really do enjoy this plant. I really, really enjoy growing it. It's just that, that deep green. It's just so different to anything else I have in my collection. The thing that looks the closest to this in my collection is the Anthurium radicans cross luxurians, just because of that sort of the leaf texture. But apart from that, it's, it's, it's not on the grand scale of things, it's not the slowest growing plant ever. Um, but in terms of Monstera, it definitely is up there on that list. But that is it, this is the Monstera Peru. Boom, so there we have it. When it comes to the fastest versus the slowest growing plants in my collection, this was it. Let me know, likewise, what you think is the fastest growing plant in your collection and what is the slowest. Let's compare notes. If you know how I can speed up the growth of any of the plants that I've shown here, do let me know in the comments below. I'm sure that the community can learn and benefit from it. But until then, Take care and keep planting.